Good morning and welcome to season two of The Review, the Instagram live podcast where Kandama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. Welcome here, guys. This is an exciting episode for me. I am thrilled to invite onto the show one of Kandama's most beloved players, Vegas Shredder, and Soul Kandama's pro, Kevin DeSoto, onto The Review today. Honestly, guys, if you don't know KD, if you don't know Kevin DeSoto, he is genuinely probably one of the most loved players in the Kendama community. He has been to virtually every event that has ever gone on, and he is basically the guy that everybody else wants to gather around. He is so loved, he is a hype beast, and I am so stoked to dive into his story and what has brought him through his journey of Kendama. It is so fun. I remember, honestly, when I look back at one of my first events that I ever went to, which was MKO 2018, there were all these pros that were gathered around. You know, you had Bonds of Tron, you had the Gallaghers, you had everybody, right? But truly, honestly, when I saw people get hyped for Kevin DeSoto when he came in the building, I don't even remember if it was an announcement or what, people were literally chanting his name. It was ridiculous. And I, at that point, didn't even know who he was because, honestly, Kevin is kind of a little bit under the radar in how much he is loved. So we are so stoked to get him on the show today. It's going to be a fun one. I promise you want to stick around throughout this episode and hang tight because we got a lot of fun to talk about. With that said, before we get Kevin on here, you know, as always, if you've been a longtime listener, that we like to recognize some of our live viewers in the show. So let me know down in the chat what you are drinking this morning as you join us for the review. Me, in particular, you know it. I got a nice cup of coffee brewing. I brewed this fresh this morning. This is my second cup. The first cup I made was Chemex, and this cup I did some AeroPress, uh, a 49th Parallel Roast. 49th Parallel is a Vancouver roaster for the Terra Fam. You should go check them out if you haven't. Uh, but they uh, do some, some pretty, good, pretty good coffee. This is a nice floral but pretty monotone coffee that I'm drinking this morning. AeroPressed for my second cup, as per usual. Uh, a couple of announcements I want to make before we uh, shout out some of our live viewers here. One... Uh, if you didn't know this, uh, this is a free show. We don't have any advertisements. We don't have anything, but there are some costs associated with running the review, especially on the website side of things. So if you want to support the show and you found this show to be valuable for you and you want to give back in some way and also receive a little bit in, in return, we do have a Patreon. If you didn't know that, you can head to the link in my bio, go check it out. It's $5 a month and that gets you behind the scenes access into the stories that go on behind the show. You know, this is where I talk about the build up, some of the upcoming episodes, you name it. I get a little personal in there every now and then, and you get added to my close friend's story where we dive into a lot of the stats behind the show. So if you want to know how the show's doing, if you want to just support a little bit, you can subscribe for $5 and you get kind of the background info of what's going on. Secondly, one thing that people have asked me is, will, would you ever take a sponsorship for the show? And the answer to that is maybe. The, the, only, so the only sponsor I think I'd ever take would be a nice coffee sponsorship. And so this year, guys, I want to try and get Onyx Coffee Labs out of Arkansas in the States or one of my local Calgary roasters I love so much to sponsor the show. That's the goal for, for 2021, I think. Will it happen? I don't know. But if it happens, you know we're going to be sending some beans worldwide to you guys and we'll make it happen. Uh, thirdly, one cool little stat that I wanted to share this morning is I get these, these chartable updates in my emails every day telling me where my podcast is ranking, where the review lands worldwide in different Apple iTunes charts. I found out that we're in the top 20 of hobbies in New Zealand. So shout out to Lisa and shout out to the New Zealand Kendama gang for putting on for the show and listening and driving the show to number 17 in New Zealand for the hobbies podcast chart. I think that's ridiculous. I think that's crazy that we're even in the top 20 of anything. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and lastly, the thing I want to say before we get to the live shout outs and before we get the man, the myth, the Kevin DeSoto on here, the king of the Ken Castle. I want to say we do have a Calgary Kendama Jam happening today down at the Devonian Gardens. If you need more info, make sure to message me and we'll make sure you're there. We try to jam every other weekend. So without further ado, let's see what you guys are drinking this morning and then we'll get our friend Kevin on here. We got lots of people in the chat this morning. I sure do do my homework. Thank you, Carter and Dylan. Uh, Prosper Above, he's got his coffee brewing and his Grove Mod ready to sash. Chad Covington with that Soul Rocket Blend made with a Chemex. Young Chaz drinking his water. Carter Justice drinking G Fuel. Use code CJustie at checkout to save some money on G Fuel. Is that true, Carter? Are you actually sponsored by G Fuel? Deep Hats with Cranberry Juice. We got the Soul Rocket Blend again from King Kanama. And we see Brian Harley94 
with this OG KD mod. I, I got my OG KD mod right here. It's actually on a, an OG Soul Vibe Ken. I think it was from like the Alex Mitchell vibe. I was trying to find my KD Ken this morning, but I don't know where I put it. Anyways, we'll see. Uh, the 904 Kendama is drinking H2O straight from the fridge. Dustin A. Nut with the medium roast and Austin Field with the smoothie. Gucci Moon Boots with that light roast and so, so much more. But guys, we're going to cut right to the chase. We're going to get Kevin on here. We're going to dive into this episode of The Review because I know you're waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. So let's just dive in and have some coffee with our friend Kevin. Here we go. Here. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, let me know if Carter's actually sponsored by G Fuel. We need the answer to that. Give Kevin a moment here. We're just waiting for him to get on. Sometimes it takes a minute to connect. Let's see. We'll send that request again. Let's we'll see if we can get you on here. KD, you might need to leave and rejoin if, if you can't join right now. This is all good. We see some Gatorade in the chat. We got a couple other things going on in here. Is there any news that we missed this week from the wrap-up of what is going on? What else has happened in the Kendama world? Uh, Kevin, let's see if we can get you back in here. If you want to leave the live and come back, I'll send the request again. I'm going to hope to get him on here. It would be the, the optimal situation for today's episode of The Review. Mm -hmm. It's a big soul day. There's a new soul drop coming at 1 p.m., uh, my time, I think, and 3 p.m. Eastern, which is, yeah, basically right after this show. So you might want to stick around, find out what's going on. All right, Kevin, let's get you on here. Come on. Trying to get you. Yeah, Instagram, come on. What's the beef here? Kevin, 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 where are you at? Hello, Luke might be planning a freestyle comp. That's exciting. Kevin, do you want to just close your IG and try and rejoin? Let's see. Trying to get him in here. It's tweaking. Tweaking. Hmm. Well, we could restart the live. That might be what we have to do. Uh, I can try that. Uh, but I'd rather not because I don't want to lose the whole intro when we get to the podcast, when we upload it. Uh, have, you, have you tried uh, closing it and reopening it? You know, the classic IT reference. Did you try turning it off and on again? Maybe it's on my end. Keep saying you're unable to join. Hey, guys, we're going to try and get maybe Chad Covington on here for a quick second. Chad, are you in the room? Let's see if we can just get someone on. We'll boot Chad out right away. We'll find out if it's on my end here. No, it's not a Whirly Rhea situation because uh, Whirly, she was able to, to just go update her IG and hop back in, but this seems a little bit different. So we got Chad on here. Chad, how you doing? Good morning. How's it going? <laughs> uh, it's going fantastic. Let's see if we can just add our friend Kevin in here now that you're here. Let's see if this changes anything for him. I was going to say, I wonder if it's an update situation. Uh, well, I, yeah, I sent the message to Kevin this morning. I said, Kevin, make sure, make sure you've updated Instagram because they've upgraded their IG. And so now you can actually have four people in a live at a time. That's crazy. I'm ex well, who knows? Maybe that'll do the trick. Yeah, we're hoping so. Um, we're going to give him a quick second. Maybe try and go update again, KD, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, guys, uh, this is Kevin DeSoto. He's been growing out his hair. Did you know that? Quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh I'm not my as God. good at beatboxing as Kevin, but I can, you know, give a, a few solid attempts. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, we're, we're hoping that uh, Kevin can hop in here. We'll, we'll try again in another minute. But um, while, while we're waiting, uh, Chad, there, there's some exciting stuff happening today. And, and I'm, I'm pretty keen on it. It's, it's pretty exciting. There's been a lot of guesses from people of what's going down. A lot of guesses, a lot of good guesses, a lot of out there guesses. Yeah, uh, some, I haven't seen have enough. Some have been right, though. Yeah, a, a couple of them have been. Now, now, here's the thing. I was a little disappointed, Chad, uh, because <laughs> honestly, I didn't see many requests for me to get a mod on the site. And I was I like, I feel like I saw at least one. Uh, did you? So, <laughs> there's somebody out there that wants the cafe mod. Somebody wants the cafe mod. Kevin, let's get you on here. Let's try one more time. Yeah, I don't even thought about that question a lot. What would even a cafe <laughs> mod look like? I feel just like be... coffee is involved somehow. It has to be. It could be. Beans. Not... Just beans. Beans everywhere. Kevin, 
Hey! Hello? We got Kevin on here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right, I'm going to see my way out. <laughs> I don't know. What, dude, I have no idea what happened. Hey, we are all good. Hey, Chad, thank you so much for hopping in here and giving us some filler as we get That's Kevin on here to dive into this week's episode of The Review. We had a fun intro. I will, I will see you in the audience. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thanks for all having right. me on. <laughs> Absolutely. It's always a pleasure, Chad. See you, Katie. <laughs> Bye, Chad. Right on. We'll, we'll let Chad get out of here. Kevin, oh my goodness. What What's happened? Up, <laughs> uh, I, my internet in my house literally just like crashed for a second. So uh, that was perfect I, timing. I, you perfect know what timing. though? This show is not perfect. We don't clip any of the audio. We don't edit anything. I just take the raw audio and upload it afterwards. And it creates this real feel like you were actually there throughout the struggle. You know, I don't Right. I, I've never been a fan of editing things. I'm like a raw clip only kind of guy. So, so it's just, it's just yeah. my, my inner raw clip just coming out through this. And it, you know, it's fun. It's just, it's just what happens. We got to see our friend Chad. Right. That was dope. I love Chad. I'm Absolutely. Well, Kevin, let me say <laughs> there is a lot of excitement in regards to this episode, both for myself, both from the community, from Seoul, because there's a special announcement happening today. Maybe we'll get to that a little bit later if you know anything about it. And, uh, but Ultimately, um, we want to dive into your story and get to know you a little bit better and really dive into the man behind the Ken. Uh, you know, I opened this episode really highlighting how there's so many people in the community that genuinely love you. Like when I went to MKO for the first time, I was saying this, it's like the amount of people that just crowded around you because you just radiate this fun, this joy that people are just so attracted to. Like, man, I need to, I need to figure out what, what kind of cologne you're putting on because that's some magic <laughs> stuff that you got there. Uh, and on top of that, I don't even, I don't even wait to loan, bro. <laughs> On top of that, though, you are an incredible competitor and probably uh, a little bit overshadowed from, from a lot of people's opinions because they don't know you necessarily in that light. They don't really see you. But when I watch you compete, holy crap, you were so good. And, and it's not even, not even, Thanks, man, you appreciate. always play so well, you do well, you're an incredibly consistent player and you're just so fun to watch play in your freestyle runs too. I remember MKO18, I couldn't cheer for anyone else but Kevin DeSoto. It was awesome. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was a good year. That was, though. A, good that year. was a good year. <laughs> Without uh, further ado, though, I like to kick things off by by warming up with a couple questions and just asking, you know, what are you drinking this morning, Kevin? So I'm not much of a coffee kind of guy, but I do like okay. tea a lot. Uh, so I have this like this vanilla chai okay. black tea uh, and it's really good. Actually, I don't even know it's good well, yet. I haven't even we're about to find out. It. That's fire. Oh, that's okay. fire. Yes, do, sir. Do you like chai lattes? Oh, we're getting a little bit of lag on the, the Kevin end. Uh, um, hey, Kevin, do you, do you have a... Uh, yeah. Here, one second, Kevin. Do you have uh, uh, data that you might be able to connect to? You're just lagging out a little bit. Let's see if we can get that sorted out here. There we go. Did you swap over to data? Uh, no, not in there. I swapped back over to my Wi-Fi for a second. Perfect. All right. Let's let's hope that holds us tight throughout the episode. So okay, yeah. but yeah, do you do you like chai lattes? <laughs> I do. Do you I do, do a you lot, like actually. coffee or not at all? Um, I don't really like coffee. I mean, I work at Starbucks, and I don't really like coffee. Okay, so it's kind of funny. Uh, so have you, I was going to ask, have but, you ever tried like a dirty chai where you put a shot of a, a shot of espresso in your chai latte? Uh, okay, no, you I should give not. it a try. It's, it's a little bit weird at first, but if you like chai and maybe you're not a huge fan of coffee, it might be a, a little subtle way to sneak a little bit of espresso into your life because, you know, espresso's, espresso makes everything right. better. <laughs> yeah, so I've heard. <laughs> I might preach that a little bit too much sometimes, but... <laughs> Uh, so not a, not a coffee guy, tea guy, drinking some chai tea this morning, right on. Uh, one of the other questions I always like to ask, this, is, this has become one of my favorite questions that I think has ever been asked on the show. And I've said this a couple of times, but if you could teach any one person their first spike, either past or present, who would it be? Hmm. That's a good question, man. Uh <laughs> Past and it doesn't present? have to be a canola player. Like you could, I've heard some people say like, oh, I would teach Bonds a Tron to claim the title of teaching the goat, you know, his first spike and being like, ah, yeah, I made him who he was. Or, or you could say Michael Jordan or whoever, like who would you want to teach? 
Um, probably like, oh man, there's like too many people. Like, um, <laughs> I know it, this, it's kind of like funny, I guess, but like, if I could, if I could help like Stevie Wonder get his first spike, bro, that'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> when you said Stevie Wonder, that I like immediately sick. thought of Steve from Analog <laughs> thinking Steezy, Steezy Wonder was like, <laughs> Steve, come on. Kevin wants to teach you, man. Right. Oh, no, wait. Car Carter Carter also just okay. said Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow is another one who I would love to teach his first. Jack fight. Harlow. Ab absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, what's with yeah. The, the soul crew and, and the big fanboying of Jack Harlow from you to Alex Mitchell and Carter? Everybody loves Jack Harlow. Right. There. Yeah, I don't, dude. I, I like to think that it's my fault because um, <laughs> I, I was starting to listen to him and I was telling everybody about him. Uh, and everybody just started digging on the music and we were all just like super hype training yeah. about it. it was right really on, cool. right on. Okay. Uh, thirdly, what I want to know, and then we'll, we'll dive into the, the episode today. I'll give a, an announcement here, but um, I want to know who is the most inspiring player for you today in Kendama for you now, maybe not when you started, but today. Who inspires me the most today, man. That's another tough question, bro. Cause there's like, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people inspire me for different reasons. Um, like you have older players that inspire me for, you know, just being older. Uh, you have other players who inspire me for the trick, the tricks that they mm -hmm. do or the competitions they win or the grind that they have. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of different people, but um, if there was one out of like everybody that I would say, like, Oh, that's so difficult. That's such a difficult question. I know, I know, but it's a good one, man. <laughs> this is your opportunity to shout hey, dude, out someone in the really community that that is has inspired you. I know. I mean, I mean, a Albert is one of the people that comes to mind. Albert inspires me so much. He's so nasty. Uh, I love his creativity. Like. He wants, like, every time I see his tricks, I want to do, I'm like, man, I need to be more creative. I need to, you know, I need to learn, I need to do something new. I need to, like, all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, so Al Albert's up there for me. He, like, he's also one of my favorite players to watch um, as well. But just, he's a, he's a nice dude, and I love his tricks, and he inspires me to do better tricks. Oh, yeah. Dude, that guy is so nice. Yeah. I remember meeting him. I think, I don't remember which MKO or NAKO it was, but he came to one of them that I was at in the past mm -hmm. couple of years. And this was after he started messing with that like string trick where he like double wraps it over and pinches and he does his like, like, oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah that thing. And I was like, dude, oh, dude, dude that it's so crazy. So and so I came up to him and I was like, yo, Albert, can you teach me how to do that? And he's like, yeah, I can. I was like, really? You're not going to like push me aside and say, you don't have time for me. You don't even know who I am. And, and he was so... No, yeah, he's such, such a nice, nice guy. guy and <laughs> did I ever really learn how to do it? Not really, but but he gave me the time of day to at least try and teach me. I can kind of do it a little bit, but not not much. Yeah. But yeah, oh man, Al Albert's <laughs> great. That's a that's a great shout out for for Albert. Guys, go show some Albert some love. He won. Uh, what did he win? He won. Uh, was it the NAKO? Uh, he freestyle won. This year? Yeah, NAKO yeah. online freestyle. Yeah, shout out to Albert. That. Cool. Well. He, and he got top eight. Yeah, in the dude, the guy just always performs. He's so consistent, but he's got such a unique style oh, that I feel like most people just can't like comprehend or understand what he's doing. So then it appears incredibly difficult right. because you just don't know what's happening, even though he's, that's just what he does, right? right, right. right? That's Albert. That's his style. Exactly. Like right. me, cause me and me and him, and ho me and him have homied out like way too much on events. So like, we'll just, we'll talk about like concepts and stuff. Cause there's some things that me and him do similarly. Um, when it comes to some of our, like the string tension tricks or uh, like the, the rotisserie is what I call it. Shout out Justin Clement in the, uh, in the live right now, but we call this the rotisserie where you have it on house and then you like, oh, you almost like rover it yeah. into a penguin and kind of go back. So we like me and the homies just joked around and called that the rotisserie cause it was funny, but I know yeah. he does that sometimes. Uh, and so we, we just like scheme on certain types of tricks. So after a while, I kind of like got to understand his play style so I can like follow it is to the best of my ability. And I just geek oh, yeah. out about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a trick that I like. I like that rotisserie. I like anything where you're like controlling weight and moving stuff around and, and visually it's mm -hmm. so aesthetically pleasing to watch that style of play. 
Because it, it, you can understand it visually what's happening, but to do it yourself is so hard to do. There's a type of coordination that, that you right. have to work so hard to get right. to. But with all that said, though, Kevin, we got, a, we got a big interview ahead of us here. We got a lot to talk through. I sent you a list of talking points that I wanted to hit. I was like, this is a lot. Uh, but I want to get, get to know you, man. The people <laughs> want to get to know you. There's a lot of fun to, to be done. Um, before we do, I just want to remind those of you in the chat, if you're not familiar with how this show works, it's a live conversation. Uh, you guys have opportunity to participate in it. One, if you're a patron, I usually send out beforehand questions or beforehand options for you to guys uh, to submit priority questions. If you're not a patron, you can always submit a question on the post. Or if you're here just tuning in live now and you didn't know this was a thing, drop a question down in the Q&A tool. We set aside some time every episode to answer your questions. So drop a few in there. We'll try and get to as many as we can, but there's going to be a lot today. There's already so many. So Kevin, without further ado, <laughs> let's dive into this week's brew view. I am excited. So Ke Kevin, what I've been doing recently and what I, what I really like to do is, A, I want to get a little bit of a picture of how long you've been playing Kendama and, and then dive into kind of what led you to Kendama before Adama. Uh, and so ultimately, how long have you been playing now? Has it been 10 years? Uh, nine years. Nine years this, this year. year. That's cr so crazy. Yeah. And then you went pro for Seoul, what, how many years ago? Uh, 2016. 2016. Five. Okay. But you were added. You were added to the soul team a little bit before that. Uh, it it was the same. It was January of 2016, and I got announced. Um, okay, April and were, you were announced to the pro team. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, hey, well, we'll dive into that for sure. That's super cool. I didn't know you were directly announced to the pro yeah. team. That's super cool. So you've been playing for about mm -hmm. nine years, and and how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 28. Recently turned 28. Okay, 28. Right? So you picked up Dama after high school. Uh, you would have been what first year yeah. of college? What what were you doing before Dama? You, yeah, yeah. 19. What were you doing before? Um, I mean, I wasn't really doing anything to be honest. Like I, I didn't even like have a job until I was nineteen. Like we had a we had a solid big group of friends uh, that like just always hung out, and a lot of us just went to the same like uh, college that was out here, so we could just continue to hang out or whatever. Uh, and I, yeah, that before that was like right when I think I started working at Toys R Us, like right before <laughs> I started playing Kendama. That was like, oh, that's first sick. Job. Did were you working at Toys R Us yeah. like throughout high school? Did you have a job during high school? Uh, no, not at all. I got my first okay, job right in nineteen. What What were you like in high school? Were you a sports kid? What What did you do? What were your extracurriculars like? Um, extracurriculars. Well, I went to I went to a magnet school that didn't have any like sports teams or anything cuz I like I like sports, don't get me wrong, but I didn't want to play on any sports mm -hmm. teams in high school. Um and like I I went to like a nerd school, I guess is like the best way to call it. <laughs> like uh, I was in the board game club, like we would play a whole bunch of like the strategy Let's board go. games and stuff like uh like Settlers of Catan and then more complicated versions of oh, that, yeah. uh, which I know, like, uh, like I know Kareem says oh, yeah. uh, Settlers of Catan yeah. all the time. <laughs> yes, so. he does. He plays it a lot. <laughs> uh, we, we were playing the other night. I love those games. Have you played uh, Carcassons or mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's another yeah, one that yeah, I just yeah. played, uh, Clans of Caledonia? Ooh, yeah, I heard that's that another one, worker I placement. I love worker placement games. The, those are a lot of fun. So, well, we'll have to get an on. I've been saying for a while, we need to get a Kendama <laughs> online Catan <laughs> tournament going on. Right. That'd be so I see sick, down in the bro. chat, uh, Dylan Westmoreland said and, you believe him in a game of chess. Is that, is that real? Do you, are you a chess fan? Uh, yeah, 100. I am a chess fan. Uh, I, remember, <laughs> I forgot about that, Dylan. <laughs> I don't I don't remember where what event we were at, but we were playing chess and like it was pretty funny. <laughs> like I was playing I was playing Wyatt too. We were just kinda it was like this little like this little cafe that had like a chessboard off to the side and then we just started playing. It was really Are are really you funny. are you a pretty good chess player? <laughs> do you play online? Um I do not play online. I haven't really played too much as of late, but I do have like the chess.com stuff. Like I have a profile. I just have. Uh, so you, do you know your rating off off top hand? If you want to clout drop on any of us. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> there, there, there was no, a brief uh, stint in the Kanama community a couple months back when Queen's Gambit came out, where there was a lot of Kanama players, myself included. Mm -hmm. That dude, I've 
<laughs> That's what I made my yeah. friend.com. <laughs> Dude, it was so fun. I like played games with Isaac and with Parker and uh, with Cody, Cody Booth. Played tons of games with people. It was so yeah, fun. Uh, I, man, I got to get back into it. Chess is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was playing with Kelvin a lot because Kelvin lives out here in Vegas too. So me and him would play a lot and we just, we trade like wins. I think we're like, I think the record's like 3-3 okay. right now. If Kelvin, if you're in here, you can remind me. It's something like that. Or it's three two. It's close. Whatever Dude, it is, Kel- close. Kelvin. Kelvin uh-huh. has the most unique set of hobbies that I think anyone ever has. From classical music <laughs> to anime to kendama to apparently chess and broad. Like the guy is just right. epic. Love the guy. That's the same. Dude, I'm. Yeah, he just goes <laughs> my ass. I whoop his ass. Yeah, it's 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 reciprocal. Uh... <laughs> right on. Right on. But yeah. D Westy put in here Domina D. That was the event. Domina D when we went to that cafe uh to play chess. Okay. And then also but also before that, uh or besides like the or, uh, the board games and stuff, like I played a lot of video games in high school. Like Xbox three sixty, uh Modern Warfare two, Black Ops yeah. one, Halo three, like I was into all the competitive video games, Smash yeah. Bros. Like that's all I played was all those competitive. So, so video you games. you played a lot of games where you could beat other people. You you like the competitive nature of those games. Yeah. So then so then how yeah, on yeah, earth yeah. did Kendama enter your life in that season? Coming out of that, you worked at Toy. Did you work at Toys uh, R Us because you just wanted a discount on board games? Is that is that why you worked there? No, I worked there because I it was the one place that would <laughs> hire me. <laughs> I applied to so many places, bro. <laughs> Like, uh, it's a funny story about that is when I, I, cause my parents had always told me like, when you, you know, turn in an application or whatever, you go into the store and like see the manager and like, be like, Hey, I'm this person. I just applied and you keep bugging them and bugging them and bugging them so they can get a face to the name, you know? Um, so I, when I did that one day, I was talking to the, the HR lady who was working there and she was in charge of, um, hiring as well. I was just talking to her, just regular chatting. And she was like, you know what? She was like, I'm going to give you your phone interview right now in person. And I was like, uh, okay, like that's weird, but sure. So we like skipped that process completely because she just did it right there. And then I ended up like uh, getting a group interview like three days later. A, a group interview? And then I got hired. So I was like, yeah, where there was like three. Like three, three applicants and one of you one of you got the job and the other two went home? Like a Hunger Games-esque style thing? Well, I mean, they could – <laughs> right well it wasn't like there can only be right. one type of thing but uh <laughs> it was it was kind of cool because we all had to different like answer different things and then they wanted us to go in the store go pick out an item and then sell it to them mm. like no like know the product and be like you know why you should buy this boom 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 uh and then be able to go like put it back in the right spot kind of deal so i mean i grabbed a nerf gun because nerf guns are sick uh <laughs> and i was able to be like look at all these specs shoots like eight darts at a time you know i'm just making it making it sound kind of stupid but hey, with all your out, expertise so. from playing halo 3 and and black ops you gotta show them a show them a move right. or two with it <laughs> right dude i was like you can slide and then melee these fools on. just club your little brother over the head that's an instant kill <laughs> yeah oh, that's awesome Easy. that's so cool so you worked at toys r us is that where you ended up getting introduced to kanama or how did that end up entering the picture um so yeah, can, it had nothing to do with okay. Toys R Us, weirdly enough. So we were at my house. This is 2012, summer 2012. This is like summer from our first like semester of college, and only like three of us had jobs out of like ten people that we hung out with. Uh, and we were playing, um, uh, we were playing WoW TCG. Yeah, like, the World of Warcraft tree Hearthstone. Game. Dude, I used to collect yeah, those which, cards. Which Hearthstone is based off of? Yeah. So we, I was playing the WoW TCG with a group of my homies, and we were playing ping pong also because I have a ping yeah. pong table in my house. Um, and then my friend Jake comes over, and I've known Jake since, like, high school. Um, and he comes over with, like, a Natty Ozora. And he's just, like, doing Moshe Kame back and forth. And I'm like, what is that? Like, what, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> and... Uh, he he was just like, oh, it's a kendama, you know, ancient Japanese skill toy, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you know, you Kevin, you like challenges. Like, you like challenging things. So I figured, you know, you might want to give it a try. And I was like, all right, whatever. And I was hot trash, obviously. 
Um, like yeah. right when I started, I my form was bad. I caught big cup like one every like ten times, uh, and I was like, by the end of the day, I'm getting all these cups, bro. Don't worry about so it. You, I got you took you. it home. So by the end of the day, or like you, it's no. He, well, it was right when he just came over. So it was like the early afternoon, yeah. like noon or something, like maybe eleven o'clock noon. And so by the end of the day, like when he left at like probably like six or seven or something, I was able to get like around the block and it was sour grip too. Cause like he, he introduced it to me right. in sour grip. So like Ken grip was foreign to me when I first started. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure that I get all the cups in this grip or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot, so I think uh, a lot of people were introduced into Kanama with sour grip or the amount of people that mm -hmm. when they're learning their first couple cups, like I was teaching my nephew a while back when he started, he'd like get from here to here and then he'd do the whole, like grab this, then move his hand and then, and then go to the base cup, you know what I mean? And right. I feel like so many people learn a right. base cup in particular more than any other cup. And because it's easy, it's easier at least. Right. And that's, and that's how we got into like, like doing all the like mm -hmm. Sara flips to big cup and stuff, which like uh, Justin yeah. Clement, who's in here as well, like he's known for doing a lot of those like flips and stuff, but that's what we were doing. Um, and we called it, we called it the Ryu the flip. The Ryu flip, why that? I like, yeah, because because this one's the Ken flip, <laughs> and it's Ken and Ryu like Street oh, Fighter. Oh, <laughs> I never played Street Fighter. That was a game I never got into. I feel like I missed that opportunity That's in my yeah. life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because those are like those are like the two main guys. And since this was called yeah. Ken Grip or whatever, and it was a Ken flip, I think my friend, I think my friend Ephraim coined the phrase. Uh, he was like, "Dude, just do a Ryu flip, like base cup flip back to base, base cup soft yeah. flip back to base." Oh, cup. that's cool. And that's, and that's just what we called it. Like we had so many, like we had names for tricks that like, that were inside joke yeah. names <laughs> for just our little yeah. squad. Oh man. I feel like that's, that's kind of the thing that happens though, especially back then before there was the whole Instagram movement of Kendama. Yeah. Because back, back oh, then 100%. you had all these little pods of people that were playing the same game, but had no connection to one another. And they were all doing the same quote unquote tricks. Like someone else probably was doing that trick in another pod elsewhere. But they had a totally different name for it. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden these two groups collide and they're like, this is called the Ryu flip. No, it's the Sara flip. And then it's like, you have a big beat down to find out <laughs> <Yeah>. who's right. <laughs> yeah. Dude, okay, so you, you picked it up there. Do you remember what Kendama was? What your first Dama was? Um, yeah, it was, uh, cause after, after I got all the cups and gave it back to Jake, I was like, all right, dude, I want to buy one. So I went on Amazon yeah. cause I didn't know any better. Uh, and I bought a, uh, a mama. I've Kendama. never heard of that. It was the, it's, it's the eight ball one. If anybody remembers the Amazon eight ball, it's like an eight ball that's on okay. top of two eyes and it's a black Tama because I'm edgy. Uh, and I don't know anything about tracking at the time. So I was like, oh, that's just the oh, coolest man. one. Um, and that was the first one I got. I still have it. It's like upstairs in a box somewhere, but I still have it. That thing is well used. Literally. Yeah. Well used. And it's so bad. It's okay. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> I gave away my first Kanama to someone because I was like, no way am I going to be nostalgic about this piece of wood. And now I'm like six years into Dama now. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had that to put up behind me so people could see what my first Dama looked like. Half right. of a cup still remaining. Well, you know, broken chips everywhere on it. Blunt as heck spike. <laughs> right. Well, mine, that's the, the crazy part is, is mine wasn't even chipped. If, if anybody in here knows how rough I am with Kendamas, if you can believe that my first Kendama Dude, you haven't wasn't played chipped, it enough. that's crazy. But the spike you is You gotta like go pick flat. that thing up again. But like I would, right. But you, But at the same time, I was only doing like, like one like lighthouses lighthouse flips and like cup mm -hmm. flow with that dom right. when i first got it so i wasn't even doing like anything super mm -hmm. intense um but yeah it just didn't get it got a different type of love than like the yeah one absolutely now. that's cool so you started out kanami you got your first one and what was that early journey like for you uh, because i feel like for a lot of people the early weeks of playing kendama really make or break whether or not they're gonna play kendama you know what i mean it's like the first week or two it's like you either yeah. drop it and leave it forever or you kind of make that choice to go like no i think i'm gonna stick with this thing for a little while so what was that like for you um well for me i'm that type of person who if i find an interest in something i'm gonna be all 100 percent in it until until I either reach like a certain goal or, or 
maybe I find something better, uh, at least for me. So it was already something that I was hooked on. And I was like, I want to go deeper within this. And we were just watching like, you know, Colin Sander edit seven, Zach Yord edit five. Like those were the edits that we had to watch to learn how to do tricks. Um, like, like people today that don't have, like we didn't have the tutorials, you know, that everybody mm -hmm. has now. And you would have to sit there and hit space bar twice to be like, pause, play, pause, play, pause, play. To slow, cause yeah, you there was no slow the video either. for YouTube. Yeah. So you, so you really had to like try to time it right to see what even trick they were doing. If there was any technical ability about it, like you couldn't slow it down. So you just had to try to like, you were yeah. all up in the screen, like trying to squint your eyes, trying to like see the trick and like as slow as possible. Oh. Oh man, it was, it was just, that's all we had. And it, it was cool that there was uh, like four of us that started playing all at the same time. Like Jake, Jake was the catalyst for it. And uh, he got me, my friend Oliver and my friend okay. Ephraim. Uh, so there was the four of us. Were you, were you all friends who started like playing through high school? Is that how you knew each other? Um, yeah. So Jake, I met in high school. Uh, and Oliver, I met in uh, at the end of high school, and Ephraim, I've known since okay, sixth so grade. Okay, so friends. So I'd known, I'd known, yeah, I'd known him for a while, and they're all longtime friends at this point now. Um, so yeah, we were already homies, and then like we were all the ones we were all playing WoW TCG together, playing yeah. uh, ping pong together. Like we hung out even before Kendama was involved, and then we all got hooked. And we just started like meeting up and playing as much as possible. And if our friends had like parties or whatever, we'd go to those parties and just like go in the corner and all play <laughs> King Tom. <laughs> and everybody's just like, what are you guys doing over there? Like, come hang out. We're like, we are hanging out. This is what we want to do. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, it was so, so funny. okay, you're playing with your friends. Now, all, all of a sudden now you're super, super well known in the com community. You've been playing for a long time and there would have been some moments throughout that journey that have kind of mm -hmm. led to, to here where you're at now. When did you start meeting other people or when did you start realizing that you were actually pretty good at this game? So, so first there was, um, I'll kind of go yeah. back a little bit because when the four of us were just playing, it was only a couple edits we were watching and then just the four of us. We know nobody else in Vegas that played and we tried to convince, well, we did convince more and more of our friend group mm -hmm. to play. And that's that, that, you know, that later became what Ken Castle was. Uh, and so we didn't know that there was like competitions or anything. So for like six months, it was just us and watching YouTube mm -hmm. videos. There was no, no jams, no competitions, no nothing. It was just the four of us doing like eight to 12 hour days. They'd come over at like noon and leave at midnight. Like, and we'd be at my house all day playing. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. Uh, and after a while, we found out that there was a, uh, like we finally started to see like, oh, Jake Weens, the Ken Garden, Dave, RIP, um, Turner, you know, uh, Colin Sanders, Zach Yard, like all those guys or whatever that we'd been watching a lot. Um, They're like, oh, the Ken Garden's coming to Vegas. And we're like, what? Yeah. The Ken Garden's coming to, like, they're coming here? Like, what do you mean they're coming here? Like, we got to, we got to go to that. We got to go. Like, we were, we were tweaked out. And this is like <clears throat> early, early 2013. Like I said, six months after, like, I started playing. Uh, and, so we ended up going there and it was at uh, the district dance studio, which is where um, the Jabberwockies practiced for their performances. Uh, yeah. Super crew also practiced for their performances there. And that's where we learned that there was a whole community in Vegas that we were completely blind. That's crazy. About. So, and Vegas isn't that big. We, we had no right? idea. Like Vegas is what a couple hundred thousand people. No, it's, Right, it's smaller yeah, than it's people Yeah, just because it it's is. super touristy. It's like you got the, the strip that like they blow out of proportion right. to make it seem like it's a big deal. But then residential right. in Las Vegas isn't that big. And it's also super cheap, I've heard. So I might be moving there. <laughs> right. Yeah, see. Going, no, <laughs> I probably won't. I like Canada a little bit too much. But, but for real though, it, it, it's not that big. What, 300,000 people? Is that right? Or is it more? Uh, it's, it's something like that. I don't know the actual numbers, to be honest. I'm yeah, that's bad okay. at knowing that. That's but. cool. So, but you all of a sudden met a bunch of other people. Who, who did you meet at that first event that you went to that we so, would know? 
I met that you would know or generally uh, yeah sure like, like in who, Vegas? who would who would be some of the names that, that were there that maybe are still around to today um I mean I don't know if anybody remember because they they kind of dropped off a little bit but mm -hmm. they still play um because there's like uh Dom Dom Calumquin uh he was sponsored by yeah. Tolkien back in the day uh there's Marlon, uh, CJ, who was on Clack back in the day. Uh, man, I'm trying to think in like people that was, so, are people that are you know have names now, but some of them don't. Yeah, have the same big names, yeah. but. And then I mean, well, then there's Adrian. Right, I forgot about Adrian. I'm so sorry. <laughs> He's right here. <laughs> yeah, a Adrian was there. Adrian was Adrian was playing, but I I barely knew Adrian like back in the first right. days though I barely knew okay him. so how many people like went to this event and that the Ken Garden came out to and was it just uh, was it just Jake Weens who came out or was it mm -hmm. Jake and friends so dude it was Jake and friends right? Jake Keith Matsumura Gus Carson's Hunter Bailey um uh, Dave. And that was like right when Dave moved to Vegas too. Uh, Turner Thorne, TJ Kolznick. I mean, every big name mm -hmm. that we had seen on YouTube videos, with the exception of like Colin Sander and Zach York, oh. was there. Uh, it was so insane. And that's when like, that's when Justin kind of like started playing Kendama is when he was at that event. He was like fresh couple months in, yeah. like two wow. or three. Um and Keith Matsumura with his oversized purple hoodie <laughs> from the classic videos came up, came up with his emerald green Mugen to our little semicircle and goes, you guys want to see something? Pulls up and one, two, three lunar flips first try and then walks away. We about crapped our And hands. that's so Keith too. Like he wouldn't miss that. He's insane. Dude, bring Keith back. Did you, uh, on a little aside, are you on Facebook? Right. Did you, did uh, you see? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. There was an event in the Facebook Kendama yeah. community, I think, or something that I got invited to like three years ago or two years ago that finally expired mm -hmm. like a couple weeks back. It was called the Melting of Keith Matsumura. And it was it was like a group oh, group God. event of where we were all supposed to gather around the frozen Keith Matsumura and melt him and bring him back into Kendama. It was the most ridiculous Facebook <laughs> event I've ever been invited to. But it was the funniest thing I've ever seen right. in my life. Bring We've got to get Keith back, you know? I miss that guy. Absolutely. Most definitely. So, so you met oh, all these legends. What were you like at this event? Were you just fanboying? Were you, or were you, or were you pretty chill? Um, I was fanboying internally as much as possible because, like, I was like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to seem like a fanboy yeah. in front of these dudes. So they're just like, okay, creepy guy, get away. So I just, I was just trying to be like, hey, what's up? But I, but I already kind of knew Dave at that point too. Uh, so he was helping me kind of like. I was talking, I was more comfortable talking to Dave and he would kind of help me mm -hmm. uh, get myself introduced to some of these people. Um, and then there was, uh, it's funny because at that competition, it was like a jam, but then there was a, a freestyle hadn't mm -hmm. really been a thing at that point. It was, I know there's some old heads in here that know that it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a sesh circle. So you get a, you get an entire like cypher circle together. And everybody goes yeah. in one at a time and does their best trick. Or it, technically, yeah, yeah. that's kind of what like freestyle, freestyle dance. was. You'd go in, you'd do your best. Right. You'd go in, you'd do your best trick, and then you'd leave. And then someone new would come in and try to top that. And, like, you didn't have to go in, but if you wanted to win something, you had to yeah. go in and do it. So it was uh, – I thought it was super cool. And Jake Weens was in the center doing, like, all right, who's got the best trick? We got a prize for you. Who's going to win this? Who's going to win this? So I go in, and I do – I remember the trick like it was yesterday. I do uh, triple spacewalk, hand roll to big cut, turn table, spike. Hey, let's go. <laughs> That's what I did. That's what I did. And I and I do not. I did that first try. Uh, and be, I think it was because it was first try that like yeah. I won. And Jay and Jay Queens was like, "All right, here's your prize." And it was a Konami USA Classic. But back when the classics were tributized and didn't have yeah. a, a logo, like one of the old like prototype Whoa. classics from back in the day. That's so cool. So and it was, yeah, it was it was pretty sick. And I'm like, oh, dude, this is so sick. And everybody was so hyped. You, you and, clutched like, the dub at your very I first just, event you ever went to. Dang. Yeah, that's so cool. Also, yeah. uh, Ken Gardens in the chat <laughs> here. So a little little shout out memory there. That's so cool, man. Dude, Jake. Jake, I don't know if you remember that when you came to Vegas, like 
2013. Oh, man. And the Ken Guard, okay, KG yeah. Roots. Yeah, oh, that's so man. cool. Such a so, okay, at that event, was it just that freestyle thing? Was it just a gathering or was there a competition associated with it? Um, there, I don't remember there actually being a competition. That was kind of the only thing. There was just a whole bunch of mini games. Uh, and then that little like freestyle yeah. sesh circle that Ween's like was like, all right, everybody get around, you know, we're going to do best. That's trick. so cool. But, okay. So then what, what happened after that mm -hmm. event for you? That event obviously was probably pretty, pretty pivotal for you in realizing that this community is a bit bigger than yourself oh, and your small group of three friends. Did all yeah. of a sudden the Vegas community grow after that? Oh yeah. Because, because then we had the, um, quote unquote beef between uh the north side and the south side kendama groups because ken like the ken castle squad were all like north side of las vegas and then lv ken they were all the south side of las vegas and at that at that event we met for the first yeah. time and uh, you didn't know they existed and at so all. it was just no i didn't i didn't know wow. any of them existed at all because i i never went to the south side like ever what, at that time what side's like, better what what side's better ever I mean, north side all day, baby. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they, got, they got a couple heavy who, hitters. Who reps the like, south side nah. right now? Um, well, I know uh, Rudy's over there. Is that Adrian um, and Kelvin down there? Yeah, okay. Adrian and Kelvin. Okay. Yeah, Those they, are probably the They got some good people, players down but... there, that's for sure. <laughs> Justin goes boo, Adrian boo. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so after that event, pretty pivotal. You started meeting up with these guys from the south as well, or or did did you guys stay separate? Yeah, we I st we started. Yeah, no, we started meeting up with them more, and then we had more. Uh, cause cause some of the some of the Jabwalky dudes were there no at way. that event when the Ken Garden was there. So and, and we didn't even know that we met them, bro. Like I was talking to one of the guys filming me and Ephraim and we got his, we got his business card and I didn't really look at it, but I was like, yeah, you know, we should do more stuff down here. That'd be so sick. And that ended up being Joe Larat, who is yeah. one of the original members of the Jabwagis. And we about crapped ourselves and we figured he out. He wasn't wearing was. his mask. That's why you didn't know. Uh, no, it, no, exactly. Exactly. So like, and I'd been a fan cause like I, I used to like do break dancing yeah. and stuff in like high school as well. So like I was a big fan from watching them from like the first season and whatnot. <laughs> Uh, so it was cool to like, it was cool to meet them and then be able to continue to meet them because now we, the, the district art studio was our wow. home. It's where all the events and jams were like for the next couple of years. Dude, that is so sick. And every, right. And it was in the, it was in the South side too. So we always booked it all the way to the South side. And every time there was an event, the LV Ken guys were like, all right, we're doing an exhibition team battle, Ken Castle versus LV Ken. And we never knew about it until the day of. Uh, <laughs> and these fools would come out with like re rehearsed like breakdance routines into like spacewalk lines, and we're just like, okay, I Are guess we're we'll real. That's that's the <laughs> sickest thing yeah. I think I've ever heard in the Nama community, dude. It was, dude, it was so sick. Like it was such a fun time because we it was just LV Ken versus Ken Castle, and we would just homie out like right after, but. We'd always have these. We had like three random exhibition battles at like big events that were Dude, out there. What the crap? Really that's so sick, man. Yeah. Um, that that's <laughs> wild to me. I don't. That that's like a dream come true. That would be so fun to be there and just watch that. But also like so scary yeah, if you didn't it, know it was, it was about fun. to go down, and all of a sudden you see like Kelvin Wong and Adrian yeah. doing spacewalk <laughs> flow lines in your face. <laughs> okay, so right, dude, and that was and that was even before that was before. Kelvin was that was before I knew Kelvin yeah. that was before I knew Adrian oh so man okay ago, okay okay so, so I want to know um we, we've danced around it a little bit uh Ken Castle where does Ken Castle come from what is the name what what does it mean to be on Ken Castle like what is it uh well Ken Castle started off at least with the four of us we wanted to be some form of a collective um but we didn't really want like the name to have like Kendama in it because everybody was like, like even like LV Ken, they were LV, LV Kendama team, like uh, Wenatchee mm -hmm. Kendama team, like Downriver Kendama team, like all of them had the KT part. And we, we were like, we don't want that exactly. So what do we, you know, what do we do? And at the time, uh, me, Ephraim, Oliver, and another one of our members, Kyle, who've all been friends forever. We were in a band together around yeah. the same time in the early days. And we were, we were working on a song 
um, that we had named castles. And uh, one day me and Ephraim were kind of like messing around with like Kendama team names. And I don't know if it was me or the both of us that were just like, what about Ken Castle? Because like we just we just rehearsed a song mm-hmm. called Castles. Uh, and so we were just like, ah, ah, like just being like super cheeky about it. And we at the at the start, we were just like, yeah, that's not <laughs> it. Let's think of a different name. <laughs> And then like two, like two or three days go by and like, we text each other, like, you know what? That's actually pretty cool sounding now that I think about it more. (laughs) So it just, and then that, it just kind of became the name off of that. It like started as a, like, it kind of started as like a little bit of a joke. We didn't really take it too seriously. And then it ended up sounding really cool. We ran with it and we just, we just kind of like added or quote unquote added like all of the North, North side of Las Vegas homies Mm -hmm. onto the team. And we were just a group of friends. Like that's all we wanted to do. We didn't want there to be like a hierarchy too much of like, you have to do this, you have to do that. Like we weren't, you know, we're not a sponsorship. We're just Mm -hmm. a, we're a collective of friends that just has a title. And that's about it. That was a pretty popular thing Um, to do back then too. Like everybody, every local community had their own name. Did you guys create your own like Instagram page for your collective? Yeah. Oh, Does that still exist? Yeah. We had, we got low. uh, Yeah. It hasn't been active in forever, but it still exists. So would you say that like Ken Castle still lives? Like it's still an alive thing or do you, cause, cause you still rep it. Like you still go by Ken Castle KB and there's still uh, Justin. Justin still goes by JC Ken Castle, right? Right. So we, I mean, we still rep it. I hashtag it in everything I do um, just because it's a, it's kind of like a ride or die thing. Like it'll never, as long as, as long as I'm playing Kendama, it'll never die because I'll still always rep it. And like a lot of those other guys don't, you know, they're not really active in the scene too much. Uh, a lot of the old members, but like we still talk about it and they're still, to me, they're still members to this day. Like I'm, I'm never going to take that away from them because they were, they were part of something that was so special and such mm-hmm. a crazy cool time in Kendama. Um, and we got a lot of like, we got like a lot of tension and like all the Wenatchee guys like knew who we were after a couple of years. And we could talk to like Keith and like Matt Ballard about the Wenatchee stuff. And they're like, yeah, King Castle, like we've heard of you guys and all this. And I'm like, what? Like, you know, we were just kind of tweaking out that uh, these other, like these other famous group guys, you know, mm-hmm. knew who we were. You know, we were just kind of getting yeah. some traction before, before any of us got like sponsored That's so cool. or anything. Cool. Okay, I want to I want to touch a little bit on the events that you went to because you you well, you went to a ton of events mm-hmm. after that, and I've seen it in the chat a bunch. Everybody's like, and he won everything. Oh, um, yeah. I want to touch on that, and then Dude. and then let's take a a little break. We'll answer some questions, and then we'll we'll jump into the soul journey uh, after after the Q and A, uh, and then we'll we'll dive into that journey, your pro, everything there. Uh, but before we do, let's let's chat a little bit about the events that you attended and won because you went on a hot streak, from my understanding. So, like. Like in, in general, Vegas or like in you, general? when did you realize that you wanted to start traveling for this wooden toy? Um, well, so after, so after the like Ken Garden jam at district, um, I have, so fun fact, I have a, I have a notebook that has all my Dama travels from when oh. I first started. And, you know, there's pages and pages of all the events wow. I've been to, uh, what placements I got, if they were good or bad. You, you've been to like, so I just, I've always been to a lot. Of like it. you've been to most, if you've yeah, pretty much I've been, been to, to every major, to, major, major everything. Event, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's more crazy. Than once. Have you been to the Europe <laughs> ones? Like the ones in Europe? Um, only the one that happened in Denmark, okay. like two years ago, yeah. the EKC, that was my first time going to Europe. So it was, uh, I mainly all the stateside ones and the, two in japan those are okay cool okay so yeah uh, talk to me about some of the early events you went to um yeah so we went to uh the kg roots tour which was like the last year that it happened in 2013 um we went to that in uh, the first stop in san francisco where we we got to hang out with like jake weens and everybody and the great crazy story about that is we got there a day early and uh we go to the ken garden like the physical store uh the san francisco um and we talked to the guy who owned the place and he was like, Oh, Jake's not here right now, but I can call him. And I was like, Oh, cool. I just said, Oh, tell him just some, the guys from Vegas are here. And he was like, what the Vegas guys are there, dude, 
tell him to like we'll be there in 30 minutes just tell him to like mm-hmm. wait around and i was like uh, what like he he knows who we are like what's then it was only me oliver ephraim and uh, our friend aaron aaron moore who was on that trip so we were geeking out and then we come back 30 minutes later and a whole casting crew of you know dave keith uh turner tj alex smith uh zach yord colin sander the the gang the gang was all there and they were all there and then dave was like oh what's up guys and we we're like hey what's up what's up we just went down the line met everybody and then you know he remembered us from you know like early like six months earlier or almost like eight months earlier uh and he was like hey um you guys should roll through to the ken garden tonight we're just going to be hanging out and stuff and i was like mm-hmm. what so jay queens gives me the address to his apartment <laughs> AKA the Ken garden at the time. And we were just like, dude, we just got invited to Jay Ween's apartment to go kick it with them. And we were all trying not to like mm-hmm. geek out super hard. We're just trying to be like, Oh yeah, they're just people, you know, it's fine. It's whatever. <laughs> when really inside we're like screaming and sweating. Uh, and so we go up there and like everybody was there. More people walked through the door. That was the first time I met Torquil. Torquil was in America at that time. Matt. Yeah. He came to the KG root store. That was wow. the first time I met him. And I was like, who is this guy? What's Crom? Yeah. Like, Dude, what? that's <laughs> so crazy that you just met all of these people so early yeah. on like that. Right. I like, I, and that's the thing. It's like, so I've known all these dudes for like eight wow. years. Like I've known all, like all those like top pro guys, like they've been, they're friends of mine, you know, and now at this point. Uh, so it was really cool. Cause we were like the only like non-professional are non really well known at the time players that wow. were in that room. Uh, so it was just cool to just like hang out with everybody, play Ken. Weens hooked us up with some like free gear and like mm-hmm. stickers and stuff. And then we went, and then we went to the jam the next day. Uh, and there was like them in the middle. There's a circle of all the pros in the middle and we were with them. And then there was like a whole bunch of space. And then like an <laughs> outer circle of all for, the, for all, all the, the rest like, of us people that went. <laughs> Yeah, there, it was, it was, there was like a weird separation. And I was just like, why are they, why are they afraid to talk to these guys? Like, you know, but then I, I, you know, I don't realize that they just were having beers and dinner over at their apartment last yeah. night. You know what I mean? Oh, like, that's they, so cool. <laughs> they didn't have that same thing. So it was, it was really cool. And I'm very lucky uh, that that's that happened. Rad. That's really uh, cool. So, yeah. Yeah. And then after, after that, um, sorry, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm do, going do. back to the events now. I promise. Uh, <laughs> so that was all I did in like 2013, and then 2014 is when a lot of stuff happened. There was like a a one year anniversary of like Kendama LV, which was Southside like Vegas. the no, that was so their LV Ken were Ken Castle, and Kendama LV was like the the broad title for oh, all okay. of the Kendama people and groups in Las Vegas. Um, so they had a one year anniversary uh, where I got, I won advanced. I won the advanced ladder because it wasn't an open style yet. So the people who were there were, I believe Christian Ionetta was there. Max Norcross was there. Um, that was the first time I met Rudy because uh, he was in the finals with me and I had no idea who this dude was. And I, I hadn't seen him for like, I didn't know who he was for two years. That yeah, he said two hundred plus people at the OG district. There was a lot of people mm-hmm. at that event. It was insane. Um, and so we just did uh, like a whole bunch of speed ladders and like at the time, like in, kind of in between that, there was a lot of jams and stuff where I was getting like second place to one of the guys on the South Side squad. Uh, his name was Joe mm-hmm. or Jay Swole, as uh, OG Vegas people know him as. <laughs> so I would always get second to him every single time. Like he was the best in Vegas at the time. And I was like, man, I always get second to this guy. I always get second to this guy. This is rough. So by the time that 2014 event comes around, uh, I was like, all right, I'm definitely going to beat him this time. I definitely want to beat him. So I ended up beating him out of one of the preliminary rounds of the ladders. I was like, dude, he's already out. What? Let's go. Let's go. And it comes down to the final four. And it was Inetter, myself, uh, Max Norcross, and Rudy. Uh-huh. We were the final four. And Dave was just like, all right, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go 1v1 speed ladders. And we're like, what? 1v1? We're used to yeah. doing it like in a line of, you know, four plus people, three plus people. 
So he goes, I want to see Max Norcross and Kevin on this side and Einetter and Rudy on that side. So I, Rudy ended up beating Christian Einetter, and then I ended up beating Norcross. So, like, the two sponsored people yeah. were out of the tournament. And it was just the two local guys, one that I had never met before and didn't really know. And then me, who was – we were already, you know, two years in. We were Ken Castle. Mm -hmm. People knew who we were in the Vegas scene, like, I was getting, you know, podiums or if not like first or seconds in like every single Vegas comp that was happening at the time. And then I ended up beating Rudy. Uh, and that was like the biggest win in at my, at the time yeah. for myself. And it was so, it was so insane. Uh, and that started, that started the me and Rudy rivalry, which, which ended up going for a long time like for the next like three yeah years. so <laughs> did you start traveling or did you guys just have that many events that happened in vegas at that time um we had that many events that happened in vegas at the time like from 2013 to 2014 there was so many events like in in like one whole year there was so many events uh even like a year and a half and then at the time i think shortly after that um so the first the first team i ever got sponsored by uh, was a team called Spirit Kendama hmm. from back in the day. And it was for people who know of Alex Delfos, who was like old, you know, FKC, like, you know, personality kind of deal. Uh, that's a, that's an old name to throw I'm, I'm not familiar. Sure. But he, he made it, right. He made a team of uh, five people, uh, which included Christian Vera, um, old name i don't think he plays anymore jake parsons another old name i don't know if he plays anymore um the name brandon yoder was on my team who ended up creating the kendama drama oh, okay. blog yeah, yeah. and 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 the kendama company avid kendamas which arguably had the best sticky paint in the game uh, cool. at the time uh and then also on the team was yeah. damon kirchmeyer and that was the that was the first time I met Damon and talked to Damon. So Damon was one of my original teammates huh. ever. So I've known I've known Damon for also a very yeah, long wow. time. So uh, you just had connections with all of these. And that OGs. was that was the squad. You just met everyone really early, right? But like right, right before and a lot of them before yeah. they were anything. Besides besides all the like Nam USA people that I met in the first place, but every like a lot of people after that, like I met a lot of them either when they turned big or right before they turned big or what, you know, whatever the thing was. And it was funny. Cause at the time I remember Brandon Yoder leaving the team to be like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, I have this project we're working on. And he ended up doing, you know, the Kendama drama and avid thing. And then Damon was like, yeah, I got this call from roots. I'm going to go join that squad. So he left to go mm -hmm. join roots. Um, and then I left later because we went to me, Justin Kaz and Ephraim drove to uh, Denver, Colorado to go hang out with Chris Bosch and Dan Robinson. We stayed at their apartment uh, and all that stuff. And at the time, I was trying to, like, try to finesse my way onto Crom yeah. if I could. Uh, but Dan told me, he was like, hey, this was in June of 2014. He was like, hey, uh, Yumu Kendama is having a pro sponsorship contest. You should enter that. You could totally win. We'll even help you film it out here. And I was like, Okay, I was like, I don't even have a Yumu, Dan. And he was like, here. And th throws me a, a solid yellow Yumu. Mm -hmm. No tracking. It was, the one I, it was the one I used in my I think I've seen, video. I, that one I didn't watch like it a, recently, a but I've one. definitely seen that video, I think. Yeah. So I did, I did that video, and that kind of became like that, – that now to me, today is a kind of like a classic video. <laughs> uh, and I ended up, ended up winning, and it was me – Ty Wilson, which I don't think he plays anymore, and then Aldrin Aseke, uh, who was you know mm -hmm. Sat Kendama editor extraordinaire, flow master, yeah. like and so, so <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Is that Adrian? Adrian just said something funny. Yeah, right? that that's when you ended Marlin. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's when I ended yeah. Marlin. I so, love Marlin so much. That was that was a yeah. So a so you were song. added to <laughs> to the Yumu team on their pro spot. Did you actually have a pro mod with the team, or were you on their? How, how did you, um, Yumu work? So, so Yumu worked was I was on their pro team, and uh, I was on their pro team. And after a while, they had very strict guidelines on to get a pro model. Like I had to have a certain amount of followers and do a certain amount of things. Like it's, it was the most, 
like they asked for the most and i was like dang dude like this is hard to obtain Mm -hmm. uh and by the time they told me like all right you can get a pro mod start designing i was like cool i made this crazy cool design that i was super stoked about um and i gave them the design and they said uh we can't do that and i was like what what do you mean they're like we can't do that design it's not possible and i was like uh, okay, so I guess I'll make a new one. <laughs> so I may I ended up making a new one that I didn't really care about as much. Um, they gave me two prototypes, uh, three prototypes, excuse me. And uh, like, I like those. And then after a while, I was like, all right, this is what I want. I want this wood. I want this, this, this. And then they were like, oh, well, we can't, you can't, you can't get a pro mod yet. And I was like, Whoa. see. <laughs> what do you mean? We have like, we, you, pro- you promised me this and then you said no. And then you promised me this and then you mm-hmm. said no. So like, what is going on? Like, what do I have to do yeah. now? Like it, there was, there was so much, like I could go into this way more, but I don't, it, yeah, it, it's I don't past, need to, but, but a lot of, for everybody. Yeah. If you know, you know, and that's all I got to say. Yeah. Um, you moves done though. Hey, <laughs> if you, you, know, you, you know, they shut down a couple yeah, years. Ago. Um, they're still around. Are they? I, I'm they? not sure. I, I remember what, what was his name? Um, he was very eccentric. I met him at MKO 18 and I bought a, a Yumu off of him. I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, uh, 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 New York. Yeah, he was homie. hustling out of his backpack. Kendama Ya yeah. official. I can't remember his yeah, name. Yeah, I remember buying one from him. Um, where's, where's yeah, Austin? Austin what is his Austin's name? our resident expert on all things Kendama. The guy that literally, yeah, Vincent, Vincent, that's yeah. who it was. Yeah. Vincent. Yes. Yeah. Vincent. Okay. That's the guy. Cause he, cause he would talk to me a lot about Yumu stuff. Cause I was on the team, uh, before he became like, yeah. like That's... the man, you know? Um, but after, but after that, like all the pro mod stuff or whatever, I was like, dude, I'm sick and tired of that. And all the other, all any of the other stuff that was going on. So I was like, dude, I'm going to leave. Like, I want to look for something new. And this was about around, you know, the end of 2015, that I was thinking this way. So like I turned, cause I turned pro in 2014, um, you know, and then that's when I, that's when I started or at least to go back to, mm-hmm. that's when I started traveling out of state. Um, you know, I went to battle in Seattle, uh, MKO, some more Vegas events, um, did the grip new year's contest a couple of times, uh, went to Willie P had a contest in 2015 that I ended up winning. NKRs happened, uh, Dom and the D, like Tacoma takeover, like so mm-hmm. many things happened. Uh, and then I ended up um, leaving. I was talking to a lot of people about where I wanted to go, like in late 2015, because I was like, I'm tired of being on this team. I want to be on somewhere else. And at the time, I was like, I'm not going to ask Sweets or Kendama Yose because Yumu was a smaller team and I was getting my name out there and getting Yumu's name out there as much as possible. And that's kind of how people knew me as the Yumu guy. Cause not mm-hmm. a lot of people knew about that company back then. Um, and I ended up trying to, I was like, I guess sweets and can obviously say is like, nah, there's no way they're going to put me on there. Like they're too big of companies. Um, so I asked, I think I asked Matt Rice if I could be on mm-hmm. GT back when they had like three or four players and he was like, uh, we don't really have room. Like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Like they were, you know, they were kind of only like a year old at the time. So they were still building up like customers and, mm-hmm. and reputation and all that stuff. Um, and then I was talking to fish, Jake Fisher Chrome. about possibly going. Oh to yeah. Right. He was on Konamico at the time. Uh, not Chrome yet. Yeah. And I, cause I had still, I still liked Konamika. I liked a lot of those guys on that team at the time. So I was like, maybe I can get in on there. And I hung out with Dan and Chris Bosch and Chris Bosch, yeah. funny enough, is my teammate now. So it's, it's funny how that works out. But, um, I talked to him and he goes, Hey dude, like you should talk to Chad about soul. And I was like, dang, bro. I forgot Chad owned the company. <laughs> Chad's just such a bro. Like, it was like, right. Yeah. Cause like I, I had met Chad prior to me talking to him and we met like there was like a string and chad can confirm this too there's a string of like four events in a row like every weekend like three weekends in a row and then like uh like a weekend of space and then that uh, next weekend of like me and chad were at the same event every single time so we just like our friendship grew from each event to the next um and so by the time i was talking to jake fisher and he was telling me about uh soul i was like you know what 
you know, I've played their flows. Like, those are pretty nasty. Like, I got one at Dom and the D when they dropped it, like, a year ago or something. Um, or like, six months ago, whatever it was. And I was like, you know what, I'll do that. Because I kind of like those guys. And, like, I like Chad. So, I'll go talk to him. So, I hit up Chad and Shelton. And I was like, hey, would it be cool? Like, could I possibly join your team? I mean, I don't remember how I asked, to be honest. But I basically asked if I could be on their team. And... Chad and Chet were both like, uh, yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, they, did they have anyone <laughs> on their team at that time? Yeah, so they had um, they had their – they recently gotten their pro team and their flow team. Their pro team consisted of yep. Will Scheibe, Evan Derube, uh, Cal, right. Cal Nasser, and then their flow team was Wesley Carcone and Aaron Mullins and Lyndon right. Whalen. Uh, so those were the original six team members at the time. So – so I ended up asking them. They're like, "Yeah, if you, you know, if you're gonna leave Yumu, like you can totally join our team. That'd be sick." Uh, and I was like, "All right, cool." So I ended up uh, leaving, and it was right after. Man, I'm getting the timeline blurry just a little bit here. So before, so I was looking for companies and stuff, and then 2016 Battle of the Border happened. The first time I ever went to Battle of the Border, um, and. A lot of the big competitions I wasn't doing well in quite yet. Like I was only doing well in Vegas competitions and like California competitions. And then like I remember Tacoma Takeover, I got like third in freestyle, but that was back when Seven to Spike right. was kind of a thing. And I was like known for that. And I did it a lot more than most people at the time. So that was probably the best thing I had gotten outside of Vegas. So when we come to Battle the border when you know Christian Fraser's there, Jake Fisher's mm -hmm. there, the whole the whole Soul Pro team's there. Uh, I Netter and Mika Marsh was there on Crom at the time. Uh, Willie Pete, like so many people were there, it was insane. And I ended up winning the open division. I got first, and then I got second in freestyle to Jake Fisher. Uh, and the the prize at the time was uh, a grip, a one of one gripped soul standard wow. shape can and i still have that trophy worth upstairs. a lot i'm sure now that's it's, crazy yeah it, it's it's priceless to me because that was my first ever like major yeah. competition win and at that and at that point i was already tired of like yumu and i didn't really even rep them besides like my prototype what? pro model and that's what i wanted okay, so you were with. you were still playing a yumu even though you were deep in conversation with soul at the time or was that conversation with soul after battle uh, this was the conversation was always after okay. Battle of the Border. Cool. So, so that's, that's yeah, yeah. so the timeline was a little bit switched. So Battle of the Border happens, and then Jake talks to me about Soul, and I was like, yeah, I forgot about that. So it was kind of like a match yeah. made in heaven, you know, almost like a serendipitous kind of thing where it worked out, you know? Uh, yeah, man. Dude, yeah, that – dude. It was so it That's was so, so cool. crazy. Okay, we're we're definitely going to talk way more about the soul stuff. We're going to talk your mod, all that stuff. Uh, but let's mm -hmm. take a couple minutes here. Let's answer a couple questions from the chat from the post ahead of time. Uh, run through a few of these quick, okay. and then we'll we'll dive into some fun stuff here right afterwards. But dude, first off, let me say that's crazy. Like you had such a, I don't not in a like otherworldly sense, but you had <laughs> like a really privileged opportunity to like meet so many great players oh, that I think like so many of the people listening or and even myself, I'm like, man, had I, had I had that kind of an opportunity? Like what kind of player would I be today? That's so cool that you had that opportunity right. to meet Jake Weens and all those guys growing up in the Dama community. Oh, like, that's yeah. just, that's the real heart of it. And then you, you appear in so many of those vlogs, right? From, from back in the days, like you go through yeah. and watch a lot of the like uh, KG Roots videos and the Kusa vlogs and stuff. And you see mm -hmm. Kevin DeSoto chilling there with the crew. He's in there in the background, just showing them yeah. his spacewalk flow or you're like lighthouse string tension. I'm like, right, that's dude. so cool. You were just there and living it. That was so fun, man. Yeah. Okay. Let's hit a, Hit a couple questions here. Let's start it off with a fun one from your teammate from Carter Justice 101, C. Justy. He wants to know, what's your facial hair routine, man? I don't know what it is with people asking people's routines in terms of their skincare, hair care, facial uh, care, hair routine, but he wants to know. You want to drop the deets for us? Well, I mean, I don't really do anything, to be honest. Oh, that's uh, I have, I recently bought, I re yeah, I recently bought a beard okay. comb and it's really nice, but like I bought it like this year. Uh, so prior to that, I just, I would, you know, I would shave, uh, you just kind of like yeah. trim underneath the chin line and then trim these sides down, you know, get the mustache hairs from coming, curling over your lip or whatever, when I would shave. 
but like when it comes to taking care of my beard like dude i just i don't i don't put any product in it mm -hmm. like i just wash it in the shower and then just let it dry and that's it like i literally don't do anything mm. to my beard whatsoever uh, besides just trim. Well, there you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, Brett Walters, uh, Patreon <laughs> supporter and local Vegas homie, uh, Boston W wants to know what musical artist best embodies your style of Kendama play. Man, dude, y'all have some good questions. Um, uh... <laughs> What musical artist embodies my style of play? Man, I don't, dude. I don't really even know. I just think, I just think something, anything that's like funky mm. or groovy. Uh, he said Felly. You know what, Rudy? Felly. Oh, and Carter Curtis is <laughs> Jack Harlow. How, Jack, but Jack, but Jack Harlow's like later right. you know what i mean he's he's been he's been recent for me and anderson like, pack from uh justin yeah there's oh, there's three good one too, anderson bro. pack, anderson pack yeah good. that's for us I, that's probably what it is because that that dude is so oh, silky yeah. smooth bro so like i mean if if that's if my style is silky smooth yeah. there you go oh yeah i think anderson is, pack's but... a good one i think that's a good yeah. choice okay uh lyndon whalen wants to know who is kevin's all-time favorite teammate <laughs> um it's either gonna have to be it might be like it might be like aldrin from yumu or uh or even damon from like the early spirit yeah. days to be honest just because like the amount of conversations we'd have um and like me and aldrin traveled together mm -hmm. like a lot and homied out like a lot and he helped me on a lot of video projects like he helped me on like all my grip entries and stuff and like a couple other videos after that. Uh, and a couple like uh, we went to like when we went to Seattle and Justin was there. He remembers that Seattle trip was so fun. But yeah, they're like probably those guys would be my favorite team members. I mean, obviously, I love everybody on Soul. Uh, who who like who so do you bro down with the sure. most on the Soul team? Uh, Linden, probably yeah. Linden. You, but you and Lyndon have probably been on the Linden, team probably forever. Probably Lyndon over together. everybody. It, it, no, exactly. And that's time is just set yeah. at basically. Uh, that, yeah, I, I can see that too. Man, Lyndon, get well soon, yeah. man. We need more Lindy tricks. Come on. Come on. We, right. we're, we're working on it. Yeah, he's yeah, he's man. he's working on it, man. That's he's, tough. He's doing that's good. Tough what he's so. going through. Man, to not play Donna like that, that's Most insane. Definitely. Guys, go give Lyndon some love. Yeah. Go go show the man some support and love. He's, He's been putting on for Dama for a long He's time. Boy. Long time. Way All too right. Long. Uh, we got a couple questions um, regarding a mod. Well, we'll get we'll get to that in a little, little bit. But uh, Gia, Gianni Vegas wants to know one up with or without mm -hmm. the base cup hole. Actually, th this is an interesting question because you you'd never really played with the base cup holes. You were always a no base cup base cup hole kind of guy for, for from my recollection. Yeah, for a very long time, uh, until like 2018, when there was no non baseball yeah. hole options. So it kind of just got like, exited out, I guess. But like my whole, you know, my whole life, basketball wasn't a thing for the first like, years of my mm -hmm. Dama career. So I'm just used so I'm just used to that. And so when the pro mod came out, it was only natural for me to not put a basketball in it because I used to do these like, finger yeah. spin tricks. And like if Steve, if Steve, if Steezy Wonder, my boy Steve is in here, he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't even have, I don't even have a no base cup hole. Dude, I got, I got your my old mug. Right but like, right here. <laughs> there you go. So like, I used to do this trick where I'd spin it on my finger, and the string would catch my thumb, and then I would have it attached. Oh, that's sick. That's uh, super cool. Like, yeah, I can't even. It, the string, the string's Dude. a little too long to do it now, but it would spin spin yeah and then they would kind of whack and around and be it. like this. yeah you love playing with like string yeah. tension and tricks like that where you're like balancing and stuff. i thought that was always oh, yeah. so cool especially like your your lighthouse tension stuff when you were doing that kind of flow you do flips and stuff and you just like pull and mm -hmm. catch oh that that stuff is sick to me i think that's yeah so unique it would do it's yeah i mean i and i kind of like I don't know if I want to use the stole. I not, I don't want to use the word stole, but I definitely got inspiration from Zach Yard to do tension, yeah. anything and everything. 
because he was he was the first person I'd seen do a tension yeah. lighthouse flip, and I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. So I want to do variations of yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. As much as possible. Um, so you you actually got your first pro mod in what what was it twenty seventeen or eighteen? Twenty seventeen. Yeah, when was that announced and where was that? Uh, it was at MKO twenty eighteen is when I twenty seventeen. Okay, right. I, I remember seeing the videos um, of it, and I was like, I don't think it was twenty eighteen because that was the year I was there, and it, I think it was out the year before that. I think yeah. was it the Rosewood Ken that got announced at twenty eighteen? It was a year later. Okay, that's yep. That was yeah. Dude, Rosewood okay, first Ken off, what a what a unique add on to a pro mod has any? I don't think any other brands really ever done that where they redid the same pro mod but with a different wood type a the rosewood can is so sick well they right because they i know kingdom usa did that because they did their cherry pro mods or yeah. cherry pro mods uh right back in the day so they would have yeah, the regular ones that. and then the cherry ones so they were the only to my knowledge yeah to my knowledge they were the only company that did that um but then i know a lot of more companies over the years got more crazy with the wood types mm -hmm. and stuff um but so Here's a little fun fact, because I know technically 2017 was my pro mod release, but so if I go back to telling you about when I designed my first ever pro mod for Yumu and they told me I couldn't do it, mm -hmm. that design, that design is the slice of paradise. Oh, that's the one that has my like the, the, yeah, the, your, your old vibe. I never actually got one of those, but they had the wedge in it, which was, so, yeah, why, so did, that, why did you put yeah. that in there, first off? I'm so curious. So if you, so if you look at a bird of paradise okay. flower, it's probably my favorite flower. It's set up like where there's like a, a green, you know, spiky mm -hmm. kind of pointy layer at the bottom. And then there's these like feather things that are like orange back here and like, uh, yep. or like another leaf and then things that stick out this way. So if you put it in like a pie it, chart, yeah. one is a half, one is that, you know, little wedge and one's a big wedge. And I just use this three color, the green on the bottom, the orange for the side of the other like petal. And then the main little flower stems mm -hmm. or whatever that are like blue that stick out the small part. So like if you look that picture up, you'll see it's exactly the same colors and like uh, proportions for that flower. And that was the, yeah. my original pro mod design for Yumu when they told me I couldn't do Yeah. Hey, Kevin, um, you're, you're lagging out a little bit here. Uh, oh. Hello. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Um, so hopefully the recording gets it afterwards, but okay. I think you're good now. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Am I good now? Okay. Sick. What was so, the last thing? I, so yeah, I, I could hear you. I'll, I'll give a little recap for those that, that weren't able to hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're back now for everybody. Hopefully, uh, chat. Let me know if you can hear Kevin now. But um, you, were, you were talking about your mod and how you were you weren't able to get a design by by Yumu, but you were able to get a design as a vibe with Chad and with Soul, and kind of catching us up on what that process was yeah. like. Yeah. So it was it was really cool to um, like just see my first ever design be like physically in my hands, even mm -hmm. though it wasn't like a pro mod for soul or whatever, but it was still some like a design that I put, you know, like a lot of thought into. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now that, now that it's been, you know, now that it got released, I was like, it's extra special for me, regardless if it's just like mm -hmm. a vibe or whatever. But for me, it was something even more. So that's a little fun fact for the people is that my first ever vibe was based yeah. on my old pro mod for Yumu. That I, that that's super cool man and i i we don't need to dive too deep into your your pro mod uh this one here 
uh, because I know a lot of that conversation mm -hmm. was actually de delved into with the Dom and Nerds and the design, but do you want to give like a quick snapshot yeah. in terms of design on, on this pro mod here? Because I think it's one of the most unique designs and there's a whole story behind the wavelengths on here that I remember hearing about, but do you mm -hmm. want to give us a quick snapshot on that mod? So you have uh, like, so the base cup where my like logo is, is like um, an old school, like old school drummers, like Buddy Rich back mm -hmm. in the day had like their, the, uh, the front of the kick drums had their little logo with their emblem with their initials. And I, and I've been playing drums since like sophomore year of high school. Um, so I had to have something like that on there. So I just put at the base mm -hmm. cup, put a bass drum head uh, with my initials. Cause I, you know, I was, I was mm -hmm. known by KD. So it was perfect. Um, then you go to the beat box, which is uh, me trying mm -hmm. to be funny uh, because it's a beat and a box. And I've also done beatboxing since like middle school. So that's always something that's been in my life mm -hmm. as well. Then you flip it around and you have the EYR, which is experience your rhythm because the whole pro mod is designed based off of sound, rhythm, uh, anything to mm -hmm. do with, with, with rhythm, you know, even the sound waves on the Tama. And we get to that, and that's just describing my three kind of favorite types of music, which is jazz for the blue, uh, funk for the purple, and then green. That's for sweet. The and there was a whole, like, mathematical formula that went into making those lines line up, right? Which yeah. I think is the coolest story ever. I, I don't want to dive into it because I don't want to just re rehash what was talked about. I think people should go and listen to that episode yeah. of The Dominards and get the, the full mm -hmm. story there because you really dive into it there. And, it, and it's so cool, first off. What a yeah. unique way of designing. It's not just art. There's actually like a science and a music that goes into it. It's like the Kanama right. lives. It's got life to it. It's cool. Right. Like I have old, like I have old, uh, I'm going to see if I can find it in here, bro. Cause I have like sketches of like OG, like yeah. wavelengths and trying to figure out like how I could get it, uh, Oh, where is it? Please let it be in yeah. there, dude. I want to find this so bad. Now, now while, <laughs> while you're doing that, um, I know this question has come in so much. Uh, and, and maybe you can shed some light. Uh -huh. Because Soul, Soul made an announcement that there's an upcoming Kendama that's supposed to be released this afternoon. Uh, and, and my mm. question for you is, is that, do you, A, do you know what it is? Do you know anything about it? And B, uh, the other thing, it, it seems strange to me. You're the only pro that hasn't been updated to a, a new one-up shape or a new mod or a new design. So do you want to yeah. talk to us a little bit about what's going on there? If you know what's going on on the soul side. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I definitely have an idea what's going on. That's for sure. I mean, I would hope so. I'm on the team. You, you hope uh, you got some inside <laughs> info. <laughs> right. But because um, it was, we wanted, the whole idea was I wanted my mod to live and die by the soul mm. shape. Um, so I didn't necessarily uh, want to upgrade that exact one uh, to like the new thing or whatever, because I was planning something else. Um, but, you know, Corona happened and yeah. slowed a lot of things down. So, so now it's kind of like, Oh, well maybe we should do something. And I was like, ah, yeah, I think that's a pretty <laughs> good idea. Uh, so it's, so like, basically, uh, what's dropping today, uh, is this, um, which is the new, the new version of my One mod. of these? Um, yeah. Oh my Yeah, one goodness. of those. Yeah. Uh, so it's on, uh, it's on the one up shape, same engravings, uh, that happen and just new colors. The new colors being uh, like a yellow, orange, and like a Look teal. I don't know. So those Let's are the new ones. See if get a good close-up on this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. So there's that. That's what's, uh, that's what's dropping today. Literally, um, after this interview is done and like right at noon, they're going to be dropping. So. Oh, my goodness. Uh, is this, so, so what is it? Is this a new <laughs> promo? What, what is it, Kevin? Yeah. So this is, this is, this is officially the KD 1.5. Is what Let's go! Oh my gosh! The KD one point five. Okay, and I have a. I was. I have a. Vi there's a little video I'm posting today about it as well. I, I filmed with the homie uh, Brett, and he edited. Dude, shout out to Brett Walters. Shout out to this new pro mod. First off, guys, I've had this now for way too long, and I haven't been able to say anything about it. <laughs> and hey, I've been playing it all this past week, trying to stack some clips. Here's 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 oh my, my session, bro. 
And you haven't even had it that long. Like even the, you know, even my base cup started this, to split. But that's just me filming and. Yeah. Like, oh my. God. Okay. So Kevin, tell tell us more about this mod. Why uh, why is this a one point five? The different colorways. So here, I got I got both both your old Thomas here. Um, the mm -hmm. waves are different. They're not the same. Uh, they're they're a different yeah. frequency, at least from what I can see. So give us some deets. Like, I mean, it's mainly, you know, I mainly just kind of wanted to give it a, you know, just kind of a freshen up. I didn't want to use the exact same colors. And, um, you know, so it's not exactly, I'll say, I'll say this. It's not exactly one and it's not exactly okay. two. So it's 1.5. 1. You, you were hinting at something. You were saying mm -hmm. that this one kind of came as a like, hey, it's Corona. We got to do something. But it wasn't what you ultimately are are expecting or wanting you're kind of hinting at maybe something else is coming down the road but yeah like like i said it's it's not one and it's not two is the, the new kd 1.5 pro mod and drop in today yeah and it's actually um from my from my knowledge it is uh this is a there's a one it's like one drop of this uh I don't think we're ordering any more. We have a we have a we have a decent amount of them, but I don't think we're going to be restocking them after this drop. Uh, so it's like low key, a little exclusive. Little exclusive, so guys. You hear me. that? You got to go yeah. get one, man. People people <laughs> got to scoop them. They're going live in thirty minutes, right? They're going live thirty minutes on the Soul site. Yeah, uh, I think you can also at twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock Pacific, Pacific Standard. So yeah, thirty minutes from now, mm -hmm. they're going live on the Soul Soul uh, Kendama's website. You can order them there. I think they're also mm -hmm. dropping in Japan from the Yumu store. So if anyone's listening, uh, listen, or yeah. not, not, uh, not Yumu, um, not what, Yumu, Mumu. But, uh, what, or is Gorkin? it through the Mumu? Yeah. I don't, You're going to be don't dropping in exactly Japan exactly wherever you get your soul plug. <laughs> and if you want to order in Canada, I also got them here as well. Uh, and I figured we'll, we'll do something a little fun. If you, if you order, if you're Canadian, I got a couple of your, your vibes still here at the Berry Trio, which I want to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. in the last little bit that we got as well. Yeah. Um, you get you can scoop them on the website today, and if you order both a Berry Trio and one of the new Kendama uh, KD mods, use code Brewview and I'll do free shipping. Because you know what? Let's support the fan. Let's get these mods out there. Yeah, and there there is so there is some no base cup hole options. Um, there's a very limited amount of no hole base cup options. Like there's way more hole uh, base cup holes than there are non base oh, yeah. cup holes. So. Um, and what, so I'm just reading some of the comments, what kind of wood, the same woods of my old pro model, Ash Tama, Maple Ken, it is on the one up shape. So it is on the newest shape that's on all the pro mods and stuff. Um, and then Soul also said in here, this will be the only opportunity, this drop will be the only opportunity to get this. So yes, this is the only, only drop one. that we are doing. Yeah. Canada, Japan and USA drop. All of them have them in come stock. Scoop. So absolutely. Yeah. Come go scoop, you know? In like Absolutely. 30 minutes, okay, so good. in this next couple minutes, I want to chat about your career with mm. Soul. What does this mean for you? Like, this is exciting. You've been with Soul for a long time. When when anyone thinks about Soul, they think yeah. of I, I think one of the first associations is maybe Chad, but then secondly, you, right? You've mm. you've been around with Soul for so long. You've podiumed for Soul. You've competed for Soul. You've repped Soul mm. for so long. Uh, this is exciting, man. Uh, mm. How does it feel? Uh, I mean, it feels really great. Like it's just been, it's been a fun ride to see like the rise of soul. You know what I mean? Cause soul wasn't, soul wasn't as big as it is today, mm -hmm. you know, like four or five years ago. So to be able to be a part of that and to see it happen has been not like yeah. nothing else. Like it's such a, it's such a cool experience to see like the rise, yeah. you know? Uh, and I, I wouldn't change it for the world, man. I Dude, that's so cool, world. man. And, and I think so. A, like everybody knows, I, I'm biased. I really love Soul a lot. Love Chad. Love Shelton. Love the whole team. So so uh, am I. A bit so biased. Am I. <laughs> I love I love everybody in Kanama. But but one of the things that I think is super cool uh, is that you've you've gone to design multiple Kanamas, not just pro mods. That's one of the unique offerings of being on the Soul team is that you also get to design your own vibe. Yeah. And so you designed the Berry Trio. You've designed this and your and your other one as well. Um, yeah, talk, talk to me a little bit about the Berry Trio. I don't know if we've ever had an opportunity to hear much so, about it. Yeah, so the Berry, so the Berry Trio, I didn't even design. Um, fun fact. 
So my uh, my very close friend right now, Gabe, uh, who is at G G underscore and underscore mm-hmm. really. Um, I got him in. I got him into Kendama when I started working at Starbucks. Uh, he's a nice. coworker of mine, and um, he's been getting really nasty at the game. And we hang out all the time. And I got to a point where Chad was like, "We need to do new vibes." I was like, "Oh, I can't do the slice of paradise anymore." He's like, "No, nah, everybody needs to do a new one." I was like, "All right, all right." So I couldn't think of anything because I was I was working on other projects at the time, so I, I didn't really have all my focus. And I was like, "Let me see." I was like, let me ask Gabe to design it. Like, let's see what he can come up with. And then he can have, you know, it'll be like our vibe. Like, a, a, it's through me, but it's his, you know, design completely. So I remember asking him, I was like, hey, how would you feel if I, you know, if you designed my next vibe for me? And he was like, uh, what? He's like, dude, of course I would want to do that for you. Like, people don't just get this opportunity. And I was like, yeah, dude, I mean, you're, you're my homie. I want you to succeed in the community. I want you to get big. I want you to get sponsored. I want you to ha- have so much success because I've, I've had so much success that I, you know, consider and like love about this game. And I want him to have the same kind of thing. So I was like, yeah, dude, go ahead and design it. So I kind of helped, I helped him talk with Chad about, you know, getting all the specs out and whatnot. And for all the people who are avid Starbucks goers, uh, there's a yogurt parfait called Berry Trio, uh, and that's why we named it that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it's also it's is it also does like it look like that? The, the colors. Yeah. Hold on, like I have very... one right here next to me. I'm just gonna grab it so people can see it. Okay. Here you go. Right here. <laughs> yeah. So like, so it's like blue raspberry. Uh, raspberry and like blackberry, I think are the the berries that like Gabe mm-hmm. likes the most. And so we just kind of layered it like that with a natty top and natty bottom to kind of create like a cool little yeah. tracking thing. Um, and like the berry trio itself isn't really layered like that, but it was just his. I think his his girlfriend or even uh, Gabe was just like, dude, we should just call it berry trio. And, like Loki, shout out. To Star <laughs> that's cool. Us. And I was like, that's perfect. I was like, that's perfect, bro. Let's that's cool. It. <laughs> hey, man. Ke- oh, that's so cool, Kevin. This has been a really special episode. We'll, we'll wrap it up here in a quick second. But I, I have a personal question regarding Starbucks. Now, if you, you, mm-hmm. I'm sure you know, I'm a big coffee guy. Um, admittedly, Starbucks yeah. is not necessarily my favorite place in the world. Uh, but I, I recognize its place that's in the world. Fair. But one of the one of the questions I've always had, and this is my interrogation uh, on behalf of the community. So Starbucks is infamous for getting people's names wrong on their cups. Uh, are you told oh, yeah. to do that? Because I have a conspiracy. Are you told to mess people's names up? Uh, no, Cause, not at all. It's, it's one of those things where it's, it, just, it depends on the person who's taking the order and their interpretation. Of but they're so bad. They would spell that name. No, I've dude, had someone I misspell like, my name. It's Adam. Know. How do you misspell Adam? Right. See, some of that stuff I don't even get because I know at my store, like, we sometimes we get complicated names. And if it's a complicated name, we just go, can you spell that for me? So like, we will actually like, we'll ask for you because like, we don't want to get you their names wrong. See, like, we no, don't no, no, no. I don't, I don't believe you. Like, here's my conspiracy. <laughs> I think you guys want to get their names wrong. Because if you think about it, when you get someone's name wrong on a cup, what are they going to do about it? They're going to take a picture of it. And they're going to put it on the internet. Mm-hmm. And they're just driving more PR, more attention to Starbucks. Right. That's see, my conspiracy. See, now, I'm, that might be <laughs> above my pay grade to legitimately know if that's true. But to my knowledge, like as a supervisor, like there, we don't, we do not teach them to get <laughs> names wrong. At least in my specific store, we do not tell them, oh, type their name wrong. Uh, right. I've never said that in my entire life. Just wait, you're going to get taught that. You're so, going to get that order 66 know. call soon where you're going to have to start getting everybody's names wrong. We're not getting enough PR at your store. Sir, yeah, start spelling right, everyone's right, names right. off. Just like, oh, oh my God. goodness. That's funny. I've always wondered. It's, it's always been my, my back pocket conspiracy uh, theory. Just in, you know, <laughs> yeah. you always got to have one for when someone asks, what's your favorite conspiracy theory? Mine's the Starbucks one for sure um man i don't even like my favorite one because i think it's funny is uh that pigeons yeah yeah oh totally no they are that's not even a question that one that was a conspiracy (laughs) (laughs) it's it's to me that's the fun like 
a lot of conspiracies to me. I just enjoy how funny, like, so, and so, like ridiculous some of them yeah. sound. So I just, I absolutely. Just well, hey, Kevin, <laughs> we, we got a couple of questions here still uh, that people want answered. Um, let's hit through a couple of these. Let me say, first off, a mm-hmm. huge thank you for jumping on here. Uh, real exciting. Good, of course, yeah, the, of course. Thank ooh, you. I almost knocked over my tripod, but brand new Kevin DeSoto 1.5 mod going live in T minus 20 minutes on cafekendama.com, soulkendamas.com, and wherever they're going live in Japan, they will be there as well. It's probably, it's probably, I think so. I, I don't remember. Like, I'm like 90% sure. But guys, limited drop. This is the only drop that's happening. If you miss it now, you're never getting one. That's just it. So go scoop, uh, go do that. So, um, let's say a c- couple questions here. We'll wrap it up and then we'll, uh, we'll send mm-hmm. them on their way to go order one of these brand new KD mods. What do you think? Right. Beauty. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, we, we answered a couple of these questions, but one of the questions that I really like that's in here is, uh, this one from Kanama underscore Jinchuriki 34. What is the most positive thing Kanama has done for you? Um, all it's given me lifelong friendships that I didn't know mm. I would have. That's probably the most positive thing. And it's just a, it's also given me a, just a, a, po- a different outlook on life and what success is and what happiness is and what, you know, like setting goals and completing goals is like, it's, I don't know. It just, it gave me a new perspective on a lot of stuff. And I think it has been very healthy mm. for me and, uh, just helped me become more of the person who I am today. So, dude, it's been a lot yes, of I like that. I like that. people, man. Kanama <laughs> is more than just a ball in a cup. It's the people that surround this game, and we're oh, all we all gather to play together. And it's beautiful, man. I love this game a lot. Uh, St- Steezy it's Wonder great. wants to know who's your favorite SoCal homie, and why is it not me and Rach, it, or why is it me and not Rach? Uh, oh, okay, I was gonna say why is it. I was like, it's definitely both of them. So I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, <laughs> he's he's trying Why to start beef and between, Rach. Uh, seen... between Rach and, and him and you. This is what it sounds like. Dude, I know. And there's, it is impossible. We are, we are all one. <laughs> they're my favorite. Like, they, they, I don't like, uh, stop <laughs> doing this. <laughs> they're awesome. Um, okay. Uh, here's uh, a fun one from uh, Kelvin. Do you think that Vegas is at its peak or do you think that we can skyrocket again? Because I think from the story that we were diving into earlier on, it sounded like Vegas was like an epicenter of a lot of young blood Kanama, but, uh, but maybe was, not the was, same yes. today. No, it is not the same. Um, I think it's, I think it is rising again, uh, slowly, but surely right now, but we, we peaked, we peaked a couple years ago and then it fell it it at least for the highest what i mean by peak the highest we'd ever been Mm it got to that point and then it has fallen drastically from that and we have kind of uh risen back up from the ashes because i know Haley um Haley moved here yep which has been cool and then kelvin kelvin moved back here um jake from kenderson got on gt Mm -hmm. adrian got on analog like we have we have a lot of we have a lot of household names. Yeah, now. you guys have a um, a, or at least a really game, solid so. crew of fairly well known people there. Like you could, if I rolled in into to Vegas, there's enough people of enough status that I could connect with. Oh, to, yeah. to have a really good game of Ken with, you know. Right. I know, and that's the thing is like all all it takes is like one or two phone calls, and I'll bring out all the old heads. Yeah. Like in the entire city, we'll do it. Like I. I still keep in contact with a lot, like all those dudes and they will come out, you know, I'll just be like, Hey, there's a jam you should roll through. And they're like, all right, cool. And everybody will come out like all the old people that played you yeah. know, years ago and all that stuff. So we'll, we'll be able to get like, we have a solid scene still, but we don't have like the new, like uh, influx mm-hmm. of players that we use. Well, to. that's cause there's no new, we still have like a, well, you know what? Group. There's a new wave actually of people moving to Vegas. So the, it seems like the real estate's popping off there right now and watching lots of financial YouTubers and they're all yeah. moving to uh, Vegas because of the, the cheap taxes and lower real estate. You can get bigger homes at half the price. And so who knows, maybe you guys are going to get a big right. influx of people here soon. No, that'd be, that'd be super dope. Cause we're, we're trying to get uh, like jams happening yeah. pretty soon. Well, jams. Um, and then you got to get the Kevin B day so, battle going. We didn't even get to talk about that, but that that's a, like, that's probably another full conversation yeah. for another time. 
when uh, <laughs> when whatever comes after the 1.5. We might have to get get you back on for that. But uh, we got a question here from Wyatt, oh, well, Mr. Wyatt Bray, Wyatt Slay on Instagram. Who's winning, Jigglypuff or Young Link? Uh, if it's me and him playing, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's pretty back and forth. Depends on the day we're having. I know exactly what he's <laughs> trying to say. Uh, his young link is really nasty and it's really good against my puff. I'm not gonna lie, um, but uh, we we we're pretty. I, I would say we're pretty even yeah, in the match. Okay. But if he's having the better day, he will have the better it, day. Now, this is my question: Who is the best Smash Bros. player in all of the Kendama community that you've that you've come up against, or is it you? Um, it's not me. Uh, I'd say I'm pretty good, but it's not me. So for for melee okay. specifically, uh, Caleb Jeffries and like Chris June are probably the best melee players I've played in the Kendama community. Um, for Smash Bros. 64, Trevor Starnes, T Starnes is the best N64 Smash player. I'm, don't at me. Um, uh, then in, I mean, oh yeah, man, Jacob Watts, freaking Blair. Uh, Blair's really good at ultimate. Uh, all those Soul Cal homies. It's a big crew. Um, uh, freaking Ian Voss is really good at Ultimate. Me and him play all the time. Zach Laframboy, a lot of the DKT homies. Uh, Larry. Uh, man. Yeah, the DKT boys and, like, the Soul yeah. Cal boys are, like, the tycoons. Dude, like right Ultimate. on. I, I've never been a great Smash player. I was always in, I think it was Brawler Melee. I played Pit, and I just side beat the whole game. That was That was my strat. I was that kid. Yeah. <laughs> You're one of those. Uh, you're one of those. <laughs> I was that one. No, I, I eventually got better, but I, I definitely was that pit that's player funny. for a long time. That's, and that's okay. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, right? It's like it's like that guy who, who adjusts his big cup all, right. all the time. He's like, oh, yeah, hold on. There we go. And oh, oh, and he still misses. You know, <laughs> He still doesn't win when he side Right. Beats. All right. Um, <laughs> here, okay. I think this this is a fun question, and then we'll 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 kind of wrap up maybe after this one from James Ken underscore Dama. James, great guy, love the guy a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, he has one more question. He says, exactly. "How is Kevin doing in life?" You know, he's been wondering if you've been holding up well. It's a very personal question, but um, it is a very personal doing? question, and like recently, a lot better than like six months ago. Six months ago, would mm -hmm. be a different answer. Uh, but a lot of a lot of new things have happened in my life. Uh, my girlfriend moved in to my house with me. Um, I got promoted at my job. I got more. I was kind of down and out about like Kendama. I didn't really have much motivation uh, to do it. Like in the beginning of Corona, mm -hmm. like it was a very like reflective period for me because I was like, damn, like what am I like outside of events? You know, what am I doing? You know, what's my what's my role, you know? So it's it kind of a lot of soul searching kind of deal with Kendama and myself and all that stuff. But I've gotten a lot more motivated to play more and get better more. And especially with the 1.5 coming out as well, it's just, it's only going to go, it's only going to go up from here. So for personally, how I'm doing is like I said, a lot better than six months yeah. ago. Uh, that's all it's, it's been, it's been all uphill so far. Or like it's all, it's been all yeah, good. Man. I think for so many people this past year, it's, it's not been an easy year. Despite, you know, what our social medias might portray, I think so many of us try to wow. still look good throughout this corona, COVID season of our lives. And and honestly, like, I think a lot of us probably just need to talk to someone. And a lot of us are probably not, you know, the healthiest we've ever been. I know I've had uh, a rough past year for sure. And, and you know, whether or not that's right. seasonal related, whether or not that's corona related, whether or not that's mm -hmm. whatever. It's like, man... It's, it hasn't been an easy year and I'm stoked to hear that you're doing right. well coming out of it and that you're pushing forward. Cause that, yeah. that's really all it is. It's like, it's Kaizen, Kaizen of life, mm -hmm. you know, how do we continuously improve and, and right. push forward. And sometimes that means, you know, taking the moment to, to look back and reflect and, and re re wrestle through things, work through mm -hmm. things. And so it's, it's cool to see that. Right. Um, right. I, I think this is probably a cool place to, to wrap up here, but I always like to leave with, with asking questions like Kevin, if you could give, a piece of wisdom um, from your career in Kendama, whatever that is, or, or just from life to the people listening today that would, you know, improve their life. What, what would that be? What would you like to say to them? Um, when it comes to a Kendama career, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't compare yourself to what other players are doing because you're not them. You're you. 
So be the best you you can be and cultivate that and believe in that and you will find success. Hit that, clip that, record that, play that in your head there every you day for the next 12 months. <laughs> people need to hear that, man. The amount of, amount of people in the Kanam community that yeah. I hear on a daily basis trying to compare themselves to other people, trying to play outside of what they right. want to be doing. And they just like force themselves into a box that isn't them. And they're going to come out not feeling good. Dude, exactly. yes, preach that every day. People need to hear that. So Kevin, let me say a huge thank you. Let me once again remind people that guys, this guy, A, one of the most beloved players in all of the community is dropping his 1.5 Ken. You guys need to go <laughs> cop this today, this weekend, because if you miss it, they're not coming back. Yeah. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah. This is... One, one. one time only. Get your KD here. <laughs> yeah, if you're buying from the Cafe Kandama site, uh, we try to keep our shipping costs low, but man, Canadian shipping is rough. So we're doing a little promo. If you do buy the KD mod, the new 1.5, and the Berry Trio, you'll get free shipping on the two of them just today mm. only. So put those orders in today. And guys, we will see you next week with Colin Hislop on the review. So we're looking forward to chatting Ooh, with him. That's my Dude, Colin is another very beloved <laughs> behind the scenes guy that yeah. everybody needs to get to I know. Colin, so guys, we will see you all He's next amazing. week. Kevin, thank you so much for being on here. Thank you, man. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Peace time. and congratulations. Thank you, brother.